Good morning, good morning. Hey, I'm Joe with The Color of Marriage, and I'm here to answer your questions related to being married and being a husband. So I want to welcome you to the video today. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about, or let's just say, we're going to be answering the question, how can my wife and I remember we're not enemies when we face conflicts in our marriage? You know, I know sometimes you and your wife can feel like you, you're enemies when you are in conflict. Sometimes, even when you're not in the middle of a conflict, even after a conflict, even sometimes in the midst of, you know, the marriage, when things are going somewhat smooth, you can still have thoughts of you two being enemies because of certain situations that has taken place in the marriage. So today, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about, you know, how you two can remember that you're not enemies. That's what we're going to talk about again. So again, the full title is, How Can My Wife and I Remember We're Not Enemies When We Face Conflicts in Our Marriage? So that's what we're going to be talking about in today's live Q&A video for the extraordinary husband, because... I want you to be an extraordinary husband. This is what extraordinary husbands do. They learn things so that their marriage can get better before things get to the place where it goes downhill. So you don't just wait for things to happen to <clears throat> try to fix them. But as an extraordinary husband, you are proactive instead of reactive. As an extraordinary husband, you are striving towards being excellent instead of striving towards getting things done when they need to get done. So let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your mercy, your grace, your kindness for allowing us to have this time in today's live Q&A video for the extraordinary husband. Father, I invite you we invite you to be a part of today's video we ask that your holy spirit preside over today's video that the words that are in <clears throat> my heart come through my mouth that needs to be spoken so that the husbands and whoever else is listening to this video can understand why husbands and wives feel like they are enemies during times of conflicts and even throughout their marriage they can feel like they are enemies help them to clearly understand this so that they can stop participating in those acts those activities that make them feel like they're enemies uh, even though sometimes those feelings are very very strong help them to see that they're not enemies they are not enemies so i thank you lord for that um, remove anything that will prevent us from having a successful session. Open up our ears, eyes, and, and hearts so that we can see, hear, and receive what you have. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, again, welcome to the live Q&A for the Extraordinary Husband, where I, Joe Robinson, answer questions related to being married and being a husband. And also answer different other questions. So that's not the only questions that I answer. So if you have questions that you want me to answer, just go ahead and drop them in the comments. That would be great. I would love to be able to have the honor to answer your questions so that you can resolve whatever conflict or challenge that's attached to that question that you have. All right. So... <clears throat> Again, in today's video, we're going to be answering the question, how can my wife and I remember we're not enemies uh, when we face conflict in our marriage? So today we're going to cover three, re three reasons why you feel like you're enemies and what does the Bible say about how husbands and wives should treat each other so that they won't feel like they're enemies which will roll right into the last thing that we're going to cover, which is how to stop this from happening. 
how to stop feeling that you and your wife are enemies, especially during conflicts. Y'all should not feel that way. Now, this may or may not be a two-part video, but you'll know by the end of today's video whether or not this is going to be a two-part. So if it needs to be a two-part, we're definitely going to make it a two-part because I'm not going to go, you know, too far over and make this video too long, okay? So I want to let you know you and your spouse are not enemies. Your spouse is not your enemy. Your wife is not your enemy. You need to definitely grab hold of that and know that your wife is not your enemy despite the things that take place in your marriage your wife is not your enemy so the things that i'm going to teach today you're going to learn how to put those into action and actually help your wife to do it because she's going to start following your example many times your wife follows your example and sometimes she doesn't follow your example that's what being a leader is being a leader is following the examples so that others can follow because that's how we lead as husbands. That's how Christ led as our leader and he's our leader. And husbands, if you don't have Christ as your leader, then you're not going to be leading as effectively as you can lead. So make sure Christ is your leader. Let Make sure that you're following his example. Check out... Um, John chapter 15, verse 5. Read that. Maybe read a couple of scriptures above and below so that you can get, get, get the context of that. And understand that if you're not connected to Jesus, then you can't do anything worthwhile doing. Okay? So, you and your wife are not enemies. So, remember that. Okay. So, let's talk about this. What is an enemy? All right? First and foremost, let's... Let's see what is an enemy. Um, the Holman Bible Dictionary defines an enemy as an adversary, foe, or hater. An enemy is one who dislikes or hates another and seeks to harm the person. It can refer to an individual opponent or to a hostile force, either a nation or an army. Of course, we're not talking about a nation or army, but sometimes your family may seem like a nation or a army that's against you. Sometimes your wife can feel like she hates you and that she wants to do you harm. And sometimes these things do happen in the marriage. And that's the reason why, you know, you feel like you are enemies. Listen, there are certain things that you shouldn't do in your marriage at all okay just because y'all have a disagreement does not mean that you and your wife should feel like y'all are enemies just because you have just because you have a disagreement that shouldn't have that that shouldn't happen so the truth of the matter is marriage can be difficult at times okay just want to let you know that marriage can be difficult at times. And if you don't realize that, then you're going to be surprised when some of the things that arise in your marriage come into play. It's going to make you feel like you and your wife are enemies and you're going to start doing things that you shouldn't do to resolve those issues or to fight back. And many times you fight unfairly, okay? You shouldn't be fighting in marriage anyway. Everybody talks about fighting fair. Well, you don't need to really fight in marriage. You just need to be able to conversate and communicate and get your conflicts resolved. Isn't conflict a, a, a fight? No, a conflict is not a fight. A conflict is when there's something that's going on that you have to get resolved that's interrupting the peace and harmony of your marriage. A fight is when you're doing something to fix what's going wrong based on how you feel 
and you do things to make a person adjust or fall in line to what you want to, you want them to fall in line to. That's what a fight is. You're making someone do something that you want them to do so that they can fall in line with what you want them to do. Now, a conflict is something that's disrupting the peace in your marriage and you need to resolve it. A challenge is something that's disrupting the peace in your marriage and you need to resolve it. You got to remember that you're not here to fight your spouse. You're here to resolve the conflicts and challenges. And you got to remember conflicts and challenges are meant to help you grow your marriage. Conflicts and challenges is just telling you something is not right and it needs to be resolved. You need to get better, okay? So let me give you an example. When you were in school and you were tasked to do your timetables, so I know this might be taking a lot of people way back, but you were tasked to do your timetables and the conflict was you didn't know what the timetables were. That was a conflict. That was a challenge. That was a problem. So in order to overcome the, that challenge, you needed to learn what, it, what you needed to learn so that you can get better at doing your timetables. So why do, you, why do you need to do your timetables? Because you need to be able to count in multiple numbers in order to get you know, that done quicker than by counting singular. OK, so if you have 10 ten dollar bills, you don't you, you, you're not going to count one, two, three, four, five. You can you count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So 10 times 10 equals 100. OK, so that helps you, you know, count faster than you would. But if you don't know how to do that, that means you need to grow. You need to level up your knowledge. And so many times in marriage, you need to level up your knowledge. So therefore, to let you know that your knowledge is not where it needs to be, a conflict arises. A conflict arises to challenge you to resolve it so that you can upgrade your level of knowledge and your marriage can become better. Okay? So, what would, what would be an example of that? An example of that would be you're struggling with your finances and you, you're not sure exactly what's going on. You, you blame your spouse for overspending. They blame you for overspending or they may blame you for not spending enough. And you, you're back and forth, back and forth to each other. And sometimes you're calling each other names and insulting each other. And that's what makes you feel like you're enemies because you're doing things like that. So instead of going back and forth, calling each other names, belittling each other, accusing each other of this, that, and the other, that's what enemies do. They antagonize the other person. And when you are, are, are antagonizing your spouse, it makes them feel like you're their enemy. And when they are antagonizing you, it makes you feel like they're your enemy as well. So I'm going to come up with some other, some more, more examples of why you feel like you're, you're, you're enemies, but that's, that's a, a good one right there. So now in order, in, instead of doing that, in order to, to, to grow from this challenge, what y'all have to do is start looking at your budget, or maybe you need to go and see someone that can help you with this because you don't know the information that you need to know so that y'all can resolve this. So therefore you may need to go to someone who knows about finances. So maybe you go to your mother or father. Maybe, maybe you go to a friend because you can tell them, Hey, we we're having these issues with our finances and somebody that you can trust somebody that God sends you to and you tell them we're having issues. But if you really want to do it the right way, Go see a counselor, go see a professional, go see someone who does this for a living so that they can give you accurate information on setting up a budget so that you can see where everything is happening that's causing money to leak out uh, in, in places where it shouldn't be leaking out. So you can learn how to spend your money wisely so that you can use your money and your money is not using you. That's what you need to do. You need to learn how to use your money 
and not allow your money to use you. So learn. That's how you grow in your marriage. You get past the challenges by learning. So now your marriage is better. So when you learn how to spend money better, now you two are not having this challenge anymore. You're spending money the way it's supposed to be because you're following the instructions that you got when you leveled up your knowledge. And now there's peace, harmony, and respect in your marriage. I hope you get what I'm saying there. I hope you I hope you do. Okay. All right. So we know what an enemy is. We we know one thing that causes us to feel like we're enemies. And we, we also understand that conflict is meant to bring about growth in your marriage because it helps you to solve the problems in your marriage that you're not able to solve because you don't have the right amount of information that you need to solve it. So therefore, you need to get that information that you need to solve the challenge or conflict in your marriage. And sometimes those conflicts or challenges are not as easy as the finance example that I use. Sometimes it could be that your wife is dissatisfied in the area of intimacy and sex. So let's just go straight right to the sex. Maybe she's not satisfied with the intimacy and sex. And, and, and because of that, she may say things to you that crushes your ego, that hurts, you know, um, your feelings. And her intentions is not to hurt your feelings, but you took it as so. So therefore it hurt your feelings because she said, babe, I would like to be able to enjoy sex just like you enjoy sex. And that would definitely, if you're not thinking about it in the right way, would definitely crush your ego, make you feel like you're less than a man because you cannot satisfy your wife in the bed. But listen, you don't have to fight about that. Your wife is not your enemy. Your wife is only bringing you this situation because it's something that she needs to to address and it's bothering her. She wants your, you all sex life to be the best that it can be. So therefore, she prayed about it. God told her to come to you and talk to you about it. And what do you do? You get upset and you get mad because it hurts your feelings, crushes your ego, and it makes you feel like you're less than a man. So you say harmful words to her. And then once you do that, guess what? If she doesn't know better, she's going to say harmful words to you. And before you know it, this issue that was a challenge that's supposed to make your marriage grow is now dividing your marriage because you're not handling it the right way. So what is the right way to handle it? So if the right way to handle it is for you to take what your wife is saying to you serious. Don't become defensive. Don't get defensive. If, if you feel like you're getting defensive, take a step back. Breathe in. Say, you know what, babe? I hear what you're saying. Let me process that. Take it to God in prayer. Say, God, how do I handle that? What do I need to do? And God will tell you what to do. And to give you an, an, an example of what he might tell you to do, and I don't know what God's going to tell you. I can just give you an example of what may, from experience in life, from the experiences in life that I've had, more than likely, he's going to say, you and your wife need to have a talk and, and see what's going wrong in the area of sex in your marriage. So you need to ask your wife, you know, questions and she'll answer them. She can answer you questions. Y'all need to talk about what do you like? What do you dislike? And, 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 and if that doesn't get you anywhere, you need to go see a counselor that can help you talk this through so that you both can start being satisfied in the sex department in your marriage. So you see, again, I could go deeper and further on that, but, but I'm not because that's not what this is about. And maybe I will do answer a question. How do I satisfy my wife sexually? Um, maybe I'll do a video on that. And if you'd like to see that video, tell me in the, in the comments. Let me know because I'd love to do it. Um, but I'm not going to rush it, rush to do it unless I know that this is something that y'all want um, or unless God tells me to do it otherwise. 
But listen, you, you go see somebody and you, you get the knowledge that you need so that you can overcome this obstacle, this challenge, this conflict, and now you can have peace and harmony in your marriage, okay? So you don't have to do the things that, that I said was happening when you get defensive and say things that you shouldn't say and your wife say something back and some, so forth and so on. You don't, have to, you don't have to do that because that's the things that make you feel like you are a enemy. Okay, so let's go back to the definition of what an enemy is. An adversary, foe, or hater. An enemy is one who dislikes or hates another and seeks to harm the person. Okay, you don't have to harm your wife or your wife doesn't have to harm you physically, but sometimes that happens as well. In marriage, you get physical abuse and, and that makes your wife feel like She's you. You're her enemy as well. Okay. Show enough doesn't feel like you love her when you you know you put your hands on her, you push her, you shove her. That's 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 not good. Another way is you know your actions. Your actions can make you feel like um, enemies. You know when you um, stop talking and just shut off the com communication because you're upset and you like. I'm not talking anymore. You just walk around and don't say nothing to any any anymore. And, and your wife is asking you questions and you're just not saying anything. And you just walk past like she doesn't exist. And you only say the things that need to be said and so forth and so on. And she can do the same thing as well. That makes you feel like you're living with your enemy. Okay. And you don't you don't want that. That's bringing emotional harm to your wife, and it could be bringing emotional and mental harm to you as well. And so we we don't want to do that. So another thing is the by the way we talk. We did, we, we mentioned that earlier. Um, talking, saying harsh words, saying mean words, saying words that belittle your spouse or you or or, or, or your wife or and your your wife saying. Um, words that de that demean and and belittle you, that make you feel like you're you're, you're not a man anymore, or things like that. We got to be careful with the words that we speak to each other because the words that you speak to your spouse can definitely make it seem like you're their enemy, or can make it seem like they're your enemy. So. I get what you're I hope you get what I'm saying in today's video okay when I'm answering the question uh, about you and your wife being uh, enemies uh, and the question is how can I how can my wife and I remember we're not enemies when we face conflicts in our marriage and you can remember that you're not enemies by doing the things that does not cause you or your wife to feel like your enemies, you got to start resolving conflicts the right way. You know, God tells us to love our enemies. Okay, so if you feel like your 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 spouse is your enemy, then then you should love them and you should be kind for them because He says, "Feed your enemy, uh, give them drink if they're hungry, do things for them, and when you do them, you will heat coals over their head." And so. Where that where that came from is is not necessarily a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Uh, when you say heat, when when the Bible says heat coals over your the, the enemy's head, that's not that's not saying you're burning them, you, you you're killing them with kindness, and that's not that's not what it's saying. What it's saying is you convict them, you make them want to turn from what they're doing to being your friend to being a non-enemy now that's what it's saying when you treat them right it makes them say oh man i shouldn't be treating them like that look how they're treating me i mean they're not going to be saying it exactly like that that's how i'm saying it but in their mind it causes them to be convicted it causes them to repent it causes them to say this person is not 
trying to do me any harm. This person is for me. This person is not against me. That's why God tells, you know, husbands and wives in, well, it doesn't necessarily mention and say husbands and wives, but many times we don't read scripture as though it's relating to us as husbands and wives. Anytime you see a scripture that tells you something that you need to do to behave well towards another person, it's talking about husbands and wives too. So allow it to relate to your marriage just as, just as well as it relates to your personal life as how you treat other people because it relates to you as husbands and wives as well. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. So it says get rid of that. And then it says be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as um, Christ forgave you. So we need to be kind. We need to be compassionate. We need to be forgiving. And, and enemies don't do that. Do that. Enemies don't do that. So if you want to turn your spouse from being a, a enemy to being um, someone who's for you, then start treating them with kindness, with respect, with dignity. The Bible tells us in Romans, I believe it's the 12th chapter, to outdo each other with honor. Take care of each other. So when, you, when you're resolving conflict, folks, you do not have to go to war to resolve conflict. You don't have to do that. You, you follow God's instructions. God will give you husbands. Listen, if you got a conflict that's going on in your marriage, that's God telling you, you need to grow in this area. You need to learn how to do things to operate better in this particular area in your marriage. And conflicts come up all the time. It's different areas. Now, we talked about finances. We talked about sex. Well, let's talk about you know, we're not going to really talk about it right now, but you talk about communication. You can talk about the friends that you have. You can talk about the time you spend together. All of these can bring about a conflict that says, hey, we need to learn things so that we can operate better in those areas that I just mentioned. And there's a whole plethora of areas that you can grow in. So you can see that in marriage, you're going to have a lifetime of growing. You're going to have a lifetime of conflict. And how you handle those conflicts makes a difference. Now, here's the last thing I'm going to say, and we're going to end. So we're not going to have a two-part video. If you feel like we need to have a some more to say about this, um, please you know, put it in the comments. But I think we, we covered enough today to help you to understand, you know, and, and answer the question that was that was presented today. How can my wife and I remember we're not enemies when we when we face conflicts in our marriage? So you know, do the things that I that I that I mentioned. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read one last thing in in um, a couple of passages of scripture uh, at the end that that will help you even further. But I want to I want us to read this passage of scripture in James uh, that says, "What causes fights and quarrels among you? Or why what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You wanting to have your way, okay? You desire but don't have, so you kill. You don't necessarily kill physically; you can kill emotionally and mentally." You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and you fight. You do not have because you don't ask God. So God is telling you, this is the reason why you and your wife are fighting like your enemies, because you want something and you do whatever you need to do to get it. You're selfish and, and you're not thinking about anybody else except for yourself. You're only thinking about yourself. You're not thinking about your marriage. So read that scripture Look at it. See what God has to say to you about that scripture in, in James chapter 4, verse 1, 2, and 3 as well, as well. Because sometimes God says we ask because we ask with wrong motives. We want to do things, you know, for our own in our own best interest. 
God help my wife to do this for, to do what I want her to do because I want her to do it. Well, maybe she doesn't want to 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 do that particular thing, you know, that you want her to do, or maybe you don't want to do the things that she's actually to do to do. So don't ask God to force your wife or your husband to do things that they don't want to do. So this is the main reasons, main one of the main reasons why, if not the the main reason that you have you know these fights that make you feel like you are enemies because you're doing things from your sinful nature you're trying to get your things to the top instead of looking at everything as a whole start looking at you know not just from your perspective start looking at things also from your spouse's perspective as well so one last thing i want to read is this your spouse is not your enemy. When you remember that your spouse is not your enemy, great things happen. And many times during the moments of conflict, we can quickly forget that our spouse is not our enemy, especially when we're not getting what we want. That's the problem. When we're not getting what we want. When we become offended by a complaint or a statement that our spouse has made, you and I should do our best not to associate our hurt feelings, as I said earlier, with a purposeful attack from our spouse. Instead, we should be willing to listen to what is being said and think before we react in speech because anger can come quickly without careful consideration of what is being said to us. So we need to think about that. John, James 1 19 and 20 says so then my beloved brothers uh let every man be swift to hear slow to speak slow to anger for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of god proverbs 14 29 he who is slow to anger has great understanding but he who has a quick temper displays folly all right so listen very good very good i am I'm glad that we don't have to do a second part because I wanted to get all of this out to you today. I believe you understand. If you don't, let me know. But listen, learn what you need to learn to resolve those conflicts that you have in your marriage. Take your time. You don't have to resolve them overnight. You don't have to resolve them in one day. You just need to get a good strategy to help you to resolve them the best way possible. God will show you how to do that. You don't need to necessarily always rush, but get them done as as quickly as possible with the least amount of tension. Okay? All right. So I got a challenge for you all. I got a challenge. Okay? And I'm also going to write this challenge in the comments. But the challenge is I want everybody in this group to write something about themselves let us know who you are and what you expect to get from this group all right i need to hear from you all to let to know that you all exist or, or are you all just you know just fake names i don't think i know you're not fake names but sometimes you feel like you're fake names because i'm not hearing from you let me hear from you so that we can start communicating so i can start connecting with you and seeing what's going on in your life so that I can really truly know that I'm speaking the things that you need to know. Yeah, God's going to give me things he wants me to talk about. Yeah, I have a lot of things to talk about, but that's because of the experience that I have since I've been doing this. I've been doing this since 2012. Um, my wife and I, we've seen over 3,000 couples. Um, so, yeah, I'm sharing this information with you so that you can grow your marriage because this is what God wants me to do. But I love to connect with you all. We need to get out and, and, and connect in, in person. But for right now, the challenge is write something about yourself in the comment. Let us get to know who you are. And also, what do you expect to achieve from um, this group? And also, invite one person. Just invite one person. If all y'all invite one person, this group can double in one day. And then 
you keep inviting people. I want as many people as possible to be in this group so that we can grow so that as many husbands as possible can become extraordinary husbands and extraordinary husbands are husbands who know how to love better, who know how to lead smarter, and who know how to gain respect even when they feel like there's no hope. And most importantly, an extraordinary husband is a husband who is listening to God and following his instructions. That's the main definition I want to give of an extraordinary husband is a husband who is listening to God and following his instructions on how to operate within his marriage. All right, let's go ahead and pray out. Father, thank you for your mercy, your grace, your kindness for allowing us to have this time in today's live Q&A for the extraordinary husband. I ask you, Lord, that you keep your heads of protection over our marriages. Help us to grow closer to you, Lord. Um, protect us from the enemies of our souls, especially our carnal mind and nature. Lord, Father, I ask that you would prick the hearts of everybody that's here so that they can do what they were challenged to do, so that they can write in the comments who they are, a little bit about themselves, and what they want to get from this group that we're in and also help everybody invite at least one person help this group to grow lord show me that this is where you want us to be and it's in jesus name we pray amen all right until tomorrow until tomorrow i look forward to seeing you all i look to see the challenge uh, in the comments being uh, answered. I, I, I'm looking for you all to, to take advantage of this challenge and thank you for doing so. Thank you for being here and y'all take care. Have a good rest of the day. Be safe and do what God tells you.